Good afternoon and welcome to the Omni Dog and Omni Cat comic book review show. I'm Omni Dog and this is Omni Cat. How are you doing? I'm good. How are you? I'm doing well. I'm stuffed up because I've been exposed to uh, dust a lot. My wife cracked the whip and had me do chores and you know, full of dust. Summer and cleaning. Goes right to my uh, sinuses. Yeah, sinuses are terrible. It's currently very stormy here, so I'm feeling it too. So we can't smell anything over here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I got a snootful. Taylor Brown says, Taylor and Bat Sam watching together. Oh. Nice. Nice. I love this comment from Ale Alexander. Ready, Amazon tab open, credit <laughs> card number memorized. Yeah. I like that attitude. Nice. That is awesome. Um, so we were just talking about, uh, an unboxing that Omnicat was doing. Yeah. So you've got an IST package. I did. I'll just, That's I'll just funny. share the contents. How about? Let's have a live unboxing. Live unbo I just opened it. So it was just an unboxing. There's no box around me though. It's fine. Uh, it was it. also really wet outside. So I was like, I'm not bringing that in here. Oh, okay. <laughs> You're staying in the garage. Yeah. <laughs> but the first thing is of course. Napoleon Dynamite. Yeah. Impeach Pedro. <laughs> so Jess and I are real stoked about this. Uh, my husband, Reed, he read the first issue. He really loved it. Let me show you some of this art, which I think fits the movie very nicely. Oh, yeah. It's a good art style for it, I think. Uh, so Reed really liked the first issue. It it looks pretty great. I think any fan of the movie is probably going to enjoy this. That's what I'm guessing. I haven't read it yet, but I'm looking forward to it. And just as a tease... Jess and I are going to review this for the next show. So right, if you fine. guys, if you guys want to read along with us, you're welcome to. This is put out by IDW. It's a nice feeling trade. I like the feel of it. It's a, it's pretty floppy, which I like. You don't see yeah. this too much anymore. Yeah. So, so yeah, that's a good one. Got that. That's awesome. Yeah, and I also got Angel Legacy Volume Two. This uh, reprinting the old Dark Horse stuff, but boom. And they're coming out with these really nice thick paperbacks. Uh, a lot of these comics I read as a teenager, and they weren't great, okay? They weren't great. <laughs> but I love Buffy and Angel so much that I want to support it. I want them to keep putting this out <laughs> and get to the better stuff. Uh -huh. So, and hey, maybe in 2020, I'll like these. I don't know. Maybe I don't think I read a lot of this because I didn't love what I read, right? Uh, but we'll see. I want to support it. These are really nice, thick paperbacks. You know, I'm I'm still going to keep buying them because that's who I am. And I know you <laughs> love manga. So <laughs> oh, I did get the new Dark Horse Helsing. These are very nice, big deluxe hardcover. So it does look nice. It's, it's very pretty. You can't deny that. It's very pretty. Uh, it's still in the wrap. I haven't touched it. I but, can't deny it. You know, it's thick, it's big, it's vampires. I'm in. Cool. That's that's what I got. That's it. Very nice. Thank um, you. Very nice. I'm excited to read uh, Napoleon Dynamite, a oh, movie yeah. that I've seen 78 times. So. Million times. Yeah. I think um, it's going to be really good. I'm excited for that. And I liked the the cartoon that was on Fox that only had Very like 12 short episodes run. or whatever. Yeah. But it's really funny. I loved it. Yeah, I think it came out at like a bad time, right? Where people just didn't either know it existed or like, I don't know, didn't cling to it for whatever reason. There's yeah. plenty of shows I loved from back then that never made it that I think if came out now, they would blow up, you know? Yeah, what year was that? What Was that like 2012 or 2014 or something? Yeah, I can't even remember now. I just... Yeah. I just feel like, well, especially Fox. Of course, it was Fox. Fox cancels everything I love. <laughs> they cancel <laughs> Firefly. Never be over that. They, can, they cancel Dollhouse. They canceled everything good that I love. True Calling. All my favorite shows. They were like, nah, we're good. Oh, man. But if all those shows came out now, they'd stay around. Yeah. That's how I feel. Um, Canadian Invincible Comics. Yeah, let me address this. Um, I... I have a problem with uh youtube has a problem with my videos um not enough people uh got notified 
that the collected edition video um, was uh, released. Um, so I, I uh, brought it back in and I'm releasing it tomorrow morning at like 10 a.m. For some reason, I, I don't know why, but I have to wait almost a full day releasing a video so that everybody gets notified. Otherwise, nobody gets notified and my video gets lost um, and nobody knows it's there. And that's really frustrating. You know, I don't, even though I don't do any editing, I do do a lot of work for those videos and to get nobody seeing them, um, I will admit is frustrating. So uh, it will be back and it'll be back tomorrow morning and i am now only going to be uh releasing like a full day after i'm not i tried to do it two hours after and it notified like two people so but i guess you might have gotten notified and then went to go see it and i already pulled it back <laughs> in sorry uh i apologize but it should be back up tomorrow that's weird yeah, I don't understand. And n none of the other Omni Bros have that problem. It's just me, of course. So <laughs> they come up with ideas and I'm like, okay. And I try them and I'm like, oh, it didn't work. So this is, uh, this is my life. <laughs> so I, hopefully this is the worst thing that happens to me. Oh, yeah, there you go. <laughs> look at what happened to crazy Jane. Your video disappeared while I was watching it, LOL. <laughs> what I thought was great. Oh, I'm so sorry. I will definitely hope that, that it comes out tomorrow. I'm gonna monitor that and hope that more people get, get a chance to watch it. <laughs> I apologize that for that. Uh, here's a question for you, Kristen. Mm. Will I be purchasing the Blade of the Mortal Deluxes? Yes, I will. Uh, I have some of the paperback Omnis they came out with, but they're they're going to do some uh, Helsing Berserk-like Deluxe Editions, which are quite bigger than the paperback Omnis. So, yeah, I need these. And these are a great price point. Like, you know, most of us use IST because they're the best price point. And, you know, Dark Horse gets 42% off. So these are, like, totally worth the price. So, yeah, I'll be upgrading. <laughs> and will we be doing reviews or will this break out into a Q&A episode again? Well, so far. <laughs> so far, <laughs> lots of questions. But, um, oh, yeah, I actually have this on back order, NFL dude. I did order it, but it's, oh, so nice. popular, it's already on back order. Uh, so sometime in September, I should have it. The That's awesome. Button up shirt. Um, we will answer like a couple minutes of questions, <clears throat> but then we really have great books, at least one, two, two great books, one really good book, a classic series, and then a really bizarre book that I don't know where it's going. But I'm interested. I was in trying in my that. head to figure out what you, which ones you meant for each thing, <laughs> and I'm still not sure I know. <laughs> uh do you have do i have the thermos for the cotter lunchbox that is a good question it's on display up in the family room so sam i will have to check um i feel like i may have gotten that myself and if i did i'm pretty picky about my lunch boxes and i feel like that i would have uh, grabbed the thermos i wouldn't have, i would not have bought it if it didn't have the thermos but we'll see um, and here's the, <laughs> I have to answer this because I love American Splendor. Um, the, the best way, have you read American Splendor? No. Oh my gosh. That's my favorite slice of life. It's Harvey P. Carr. Um, in the early days he had R. Crumb illustrating some of his stories. Um, and he passed away a few years ago, but they made it into a movie starring Paul Giamatti as Harvey Picar. But then they worked in Harvey Picar himself, and then they animated it too. So there's like three movies going on at once, American Splendor. It's such a good movie. Um, 
I I would say the best way is to go on Amazon and see what collected editions are still in print because a lot of them go in and out of print. Um, and I don't know if his wife is handling his estate now. Um, so I don't know who's who's in charge of keeping his paperbacks in uh, print. Um, they come in, in big oversized uh, paperbacks. I can think of a couple of them uh, right now. Um, they're really, really good. And I just love American Splendor. So, Paulo, that I would go to a... a Amazon and see um, uh, see what's available because a lot of his stuff is out of print. He started selling them back in the 70s, just making his own comic book in Cleveland about his life as a file clerk at the VA hospital, I think, in Cleveland. And they're great. Uh, if Freddie watched the movie, it was a great jessamendation. Um, <laughs> what what movie did you watch? American Splendor? If you did, that's awesome. Uh, <laughs> no, I do not. Uh, I, I do have a good story about it, though, about the Butcher Block um, cover that will be uploaded onto my channel. Um, from the TV show I did in the 90s, I interviewed uh, a record collector and he um, found the Beatles yesterday and today with the butcher shop cover for a dime at a um, flea market and he didn't have any money on him. The guy wanted 10 cents for it and he didn't have any money on him. This is an album worth $3,000. And uh, he went out in the parking lot and started scrounging around in the gravel for change that would fall out of probably Reed's pockets. <laughs> Reed had such a change problem. Yep. And he got like 10 cents and pennies together and bought the album. And the thing's worth, seriously, like $3,000. It's one of the rarest com uh, albums ever. But that episode will be one of the first ones that I show once I get everything uploaded and uh, introduced. We had it all converted from VHS to digital. So we're definitely, um, oh, good. American Splendors on HBO Max. That's boss. OK, before these guys take us into <laughs> Q&A land, let's at least talk about uh, some books we liked. Let's t uh, I would like to talk about, I think this was a Chris recommendation. I think uh, I know where you're going with, yeah. Yeah, and yeah. so far, the second half of the year, it's my top book, that would uh, be Dragon Hoops. Yeah, and under that, it's also nice and shiny. Oh, I never even took the cover <laughs> off, because, you know, I don't take the cover you're off. Because you a heathen. <laughs> um, that is, um, it's got the basketball feeling cover. And uh, Kristen recommended it, and I'd always been sort of interested in it, but this book, this book is my, so far, the second half of the year, it's my favorite. What, do you, what are your thoughts on it, Kristen? Uh, I also really enjoyed it. I have to point out, as many of you may know, I'm not a sports fan. But this book is by uh, Gene Yang, and it's about his life, where he's a math teacher. He's been a math teacher for many, many years at this high school, and he's looking for his next book. He, he isn't sure what to do it on, and he just happens to... he What is he? He's like a friends, kind of friends with the coach of the basketball team. Is that right? Yeah. And he starts talking to him, and he realizes that there's a really good story here. So this focuses on the real life uh, high school basketball team at this college or not college high school that he works at. And it's their story. And I don't care about sports at all, but I loved this book. It is, it was very, very interesting. I, it's a very good slice of life kind of story. Uh, and I adore his art and I loved his writing and hearing his whole story too. You get to go through Gene's life and 
he, you know, gets a phone call from DC in the middle of it or so. Yeah. And they're like, hey, we want you to write Superman. And he's like, well, if I do that, I literally can't do this job that I really do love that I've had for so many years at the school that I really love. Right. So he has his own life decision that he has to make kind of in the middle of this book. But yeah, it, it goes through, you get to meet like all the students involved in the basketball team and hear their story and go through the history of it. And it's nice and beefy. Like, I don't think this, this wasn't really a quick read for me, you know, like you have to take time with it. Right. Uh, but it was, I thought it was so well done and it was very, very interesting. And I cared more about this basketball team than I've ever cared about basketball. So. <laughs> um, yeah, I agree with everything you said. And it's uh, about so much more than basketball. He gets really gets into the lives of the players, of the coaches, uh, of himself. Um, you learn a lot about him and you learn about um, the, uh, the head coach, uh, what motivates him, what drives him and the, the school. Um, I think it's an East Bay school and you learn a lot about um, uh, what kind of um, mix uh race racially eth uh, culturally ethnically um they they are at this school and then it's also got a little bit of history of um professional basketball thrown in there too um and i i don't know you know when these books just come along and i can't put my finger exactly on why i love it so much um and why I don't love another book, what, you know, what's the secret sauce there? I don't know, other than the fact that he, he takes the time, not only is it drawn really well, but he takes the time to uh, flesh out the characters, make them relatable, uh, make you care about them. Um, as, as Kristen said, she was caring about the outcome of the games and she doesn't even like the sport. That's pretty good for uh, yeah. a, a writer to do, make you care about a sport and you're not even a sports ball person. So um, I cannot say enough about this. I highly, highly recommend it to everybody. Um, I, I should, I don't know, I should do a, my own video on it too, just to make more people go out and get it. Uh, but then no one would get notified uh, because I fucked <laughs> it up. And, this is also this is a great one that like I feel like a lot of people tell me that they're not into nonfiction comics or they don't know where to begin or they've never read any. And this is a really great nonfiction telling. Um, there is something I think that amplifies it, right? If this were a fictional story, would we have cared as much? Like versus knowing that it actually happened. That's a you good know, question. I, I think that was a uh, something that I liked more about it. Like, I don't know that I would have cared as much. Uh, and I love at the end, uh, I don't know if you read through all these notes, but I did. I did. I so did. several, several pages of notes that clarify something that like actually happened that he had to draw differently. Uh, it may come down to a simple scene where, oh, this person was actually doing this or, or they uh, in the game maybe hit a three instead of a two and here's why I changed it and whatever, which was fascinating if you're at all interested in how especially with a nonfiction story, how some things have to be dramatized that maybe didn't happen that way. Or as, just a certain little thing that you wouldn't have even thought of that he put in here so he can clarify, this is how it actually went down, but I had to do this because it's a cartoon, right? Like, it was fascinating. I read through wow. all this. I got to this point, I was like, oh, I don't care about this. But then I started reading it and I was like, oh no, this is like worth your time. It's so fascinating. Yeah, same here. I It helped... Um it helped make the book even more interesting. Those little notes at the back. I don't skip over those. Those were no. really cool. I and really, it shows you how much care he put into the whole thing, right? Like he really didn't have to include all that. Like we never would have known, but he did. And it was, it was just as interesting as the story itself. I think. I agree a hundred percent. Yeah. That, um, I think this is, uh, I, the one book I have not read of his, um, and that might be because I don't own it, is Boxers and Saints, so I need to get that. And I, I own that and haven't read it. 
So that's one we should do together. We're oh. just going to read through all of his books because we've done Superman Smashes the Clan, right? We love that together. Yeah. And now this one. So. And I've read American Born Chinese. I like that. Um, and I've read his new Superman run, and that was good. The Rebirth. Uh, but you don't like Superman. But he's Chinese, so it's interesting. I heard it was it was good. I mean, I, I think I'll read anything by him at this point. I read a su- his other Superman thing, and I like that. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Uh, I will get Boxes and Saints. Um, and the, yeah, that'd be a good future read for us. Yeah, that's I got that for Dirt Cheap, too. I think there you can find that kind of clearance off. Oh, okay, good. Yep. Here we have a compliment on our shirts. Uh-oh, needed back on set. Have a good show. Boss shirts, you two. Thanks, Freddie. Thank you, Freddie. Uh, Hayden says, are we really supposed to read the comics? And Crazy Jane says, no, Jess reads them for us. Yeah. There you go. Uh, I will do everything I can, Sam uh, and Hayden, to get those episodes up. Um, I have uh, really no excuse now at this point that I've did, they're already converted to digital. I don't have to... Uh, rip them off the dvds they uh they're already digital so i guess i <laughs> gotta figure out how to get them on youtube so maybe that's that's a good idea for me to do this week nice summer project yeah we yeah still got a month left yeah we can do it you can do yeah. it yeah what am i doing i i don't even leave the house i left the house to go to the post office today that was my big adventure that's exciting yeah and then I came back and my wife slapped me with the big chore full of dust to do. And mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. now you know why I try and go to the post office so much. Keeps me out of the chores. Because now she's retired. <laughs> she sees all the things in the house that uh, need to be done. And whereas when I was in charge, I conveniently ignored them. Right, right. But she sees them. That's too bad. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, it is, but it it's all stuff that has to be done. I mean, you can't, you have to keep your house up. Yeah, it's for the best. Yeah, it really is. And um, uh, let's see, what book would you like to talk about next? You know, I would like to go to um, our classic, which I okay. feel like is pretty much a classic at this point. I think it is. Yeah, and that would be Sweet Tooth. Which we decided that we were going to reread. Um, this was my idea, but <laughs> I really wanted to reread it because one, it's been so many years since I read this. It's just, it just has. It's been too many years, and of course, we all know that there's going to be a Netflix show. So you know, I wanted to refresh my mind on this, and you know what? I completely forgot. I forgot there was a whole freaking pandemic in this, right? I don't know why. I yeah. just, it's not something I even thought of, but reading this and seeing a quarantine and everything they go through, and I'm like, oh man, this feels so different when you read it in 2020. That's how I felt. Yeah, it's it was a kinda, different experience, isn't it? Yeah, it was like weirding me out because, you know, these are words we'd all heard before, pandemic and quarantine and such, but to experience them, I think is a whole different thing. And uh, wow. So, of course, this is Jeff Lemire's Sweet Tooth. There are three deluxe hardcovers. Volume one is incredibly out of print. Uh, I do think this will be reprinted because of the show. So, hang tight, everyone. Uh, There are thick paperbacks that are out, so you can get it that way. Or if you have Hoopla, it is available on there. So, there are ways to read this. Don't pay stupid money for this. It's not worth it, right? Wait around. It will get reprinted. They have to capitalize on that show. And I'm really hoping there's been rumors that everyone's really hoping there's an omnibus because three these three hardcovers would make a beautiful omnibus right yeah so you know gorgeous art i think (laughs) a lot of people hate his art i think it's gorgeous the colors are beautiful in this uh of course it's about gus and he's he's the main character with the uh antlers that i'm sure i showed i I don't know how you keep the dust jacket on there it's it's just slipping off for me i don't know how you do this um I, I will say the design on the books is really cool. Yeah. Yeah, they're all like plaid, and then you have a little character in there. Yeah. Um, which, you know, of course, this is a book where I'm not going to get a good shot of Gus. But there he is. There he is. Yeah. <laughs> so all these kids start being born, uh, which are like 
pretty much part animal. So there's a little pig girl. Um, this was a, what was he again? Like a, like a beaver? Is that right? It's, oh, it's, uh, oh, yeah, that guy. Yeah. It's Bobby. Yeah. Bobby. Right. Who I loved. Um, so it starts out with Gus and he lives in the wood with his dad and he he's not allowed to go anywhere you know his dad's like everybody's bad they're evil they're heathens they leave their dust jackets on their books don't go out there because <laughs> they'll hurt you uh but of course you know he's tempted and he, and he kind of wanders around uh and you know bad things start happening bad things start happening people start dying from uh, a bad <laughs> virus illness yikes guys <laughs> yikes and a half yikes um there's a lot of murder and death and terribleness and you're gonna feel all the feels yeah very emotional book so emotional um it just i thought it was just beautifully done the way his art changed when gus was dreaming i thought was amazing something i I just forgot a lot of elements of the story, you know. Uh, there were full issues that were told from Gus's point of view that were um, horizontal. So you had to change your, the way you were reading the book. Let me find some of that. And they were very like, um, like, like a storybook, right? So yeah. they were told like this. And there was full text from Gus's point of view. Uh, because it was kind of a kid's book, right? But there, I mean, there were not kids kind of thing, things happening. But he's a kid. So there were just these full issues where you were getting it from his kind of childlike perspective, which was wonder wonderfully done. They were interspersed where they should have been, exactly where they should have been. Uh, there's some full-on um, flashbacks that are all done by Matt Kent. Is there some of oh, that yeah, in here? Right. Yeah, so the art changed for those two, where there's just, um, it was like, years and years and hundreds of years ago uh, there were these flashbacks that were really important to the story and the art would change for those too i just thought you know i everybody knows i love lemire but here's the matt ken stuff so the art was just completely different for these flashbacks so you knew like when the art changed tremendously when it wasn't lemire or it wasn't lemire like crazy sketchy watercolor Lemire, which was kind of how it was with um, Guess's Dreams. I don't know, there were very specific storytelling elements that were just beautifully done throughout this. So that if you've read other Lemire stuff, like I love his stuff, but it, nothing compares to the way this was put together, you know? Yeah. There's more Matt Kent. So, so there's several issues of like this really a uh, long time ago flashback of these characters that were important um, and you find out why later on. I feel like there's a lot of this I can't say because I don't want to ruin it, but yeah, you know, especially right now, I think this is a great time to read it with the show coming out, with the pandemic happening. Um, I had a yeah. great time. It, it, it made it harder for me to read um, because of the pandemic. Taylor Brown and I were going to read DC Deceased about, um, for Batter Days in the Batcave. And I start, we started reading it. This was back in April, of course, when we, we both admittedly were um, not in the best frame of mind. Uh, <clears throat> I couldn't read it, uh, Deceased. It was, you know, it's about a zombie pandemic or something. And uh, so I found Sweet Tooth to be a little harder to read. I had already read it a couple times anyway, so I didn't, um, I didn't, uh, I didn't have any surprises. But it it um, it made it a little harder for me to read. And I will fully admit this was the first time I ever experienced Jeff Lemire's art, and it did take me a little bit to uh, get accustomed to it. Um, I, I understand people who dislike it or can't understand it. Um, uh, but I, I got used to it and ended up, I ended up uh, really enjoying it. Um, I especially love this not in Sweet Tooth. Well, I guess it is part of Sweet Tooth. Whenever he draws hockey players playing hockey, he's always got them so big and just yeah gnarly nose and <laughs> cauliflower ears and just like prize fighters on the mm -hmm. ice perfectly and done it's really, it's really cool um 
the way he draws his uh, his hockey players. Um, I will say, as like uh, someone who's a, a big fan of his art, like a, there's tons of people who hate his art. I think um, the way this was colored, and he did the colors too, may oh, make yeah. someone like it more uh, than maybe they would in like a black and white setting. That's at least how I felt while I was reading this. I was like, I feel like it's more polished in here than maybe it ever was before, you know? Oh, okay. Especially versus like Essex County, which of course is my favorite, but I understand it's it's at peak sketchiness, right? Yeah. Versus uh, with the colors in this, I don't know. I feel like it's more, it's still very much his style, of course, um, but there's something more refined about it. Yeah, you're right. Well, you can see it right there. Yeah. The look on the old man and on Gus's face right there. Yeah, even like, um, I, of course, I can't find it probably quickly. But, you know, I mentioned when Gus would be dreaming, the art style. Well, here we go. I had to find it. Um, the art would change drastically. And it was still Lemire. Uh, but it was him watercoloring, right? Uh, yeah. So you can see the difference right there. Like the watercolors versus um, what I assume is digital colors here. So it made it even more like... And I love this stuff, but it is like peak sketchy Lemire stuff, right? Yeah. So I feel like there's quite a difference from like this stuff versus, really? <laughs> yeah, that's gross. <laughs> I've been trying yeah, to avoid the gross stuff because this, <laughs> this, this book is a very violent. There's a lot of blood. There's a lot of death. Yeah, if you can't handle that of, right now, I understand. There's a lot of mistreatment of people in it. Yeah. People mistreating. It's like a very much an every man for himself type of environment and uh, people get down to uh, their base instincts, which is, uh, you know, being terrible yeah, to <laughs> yeah. each other. And I, you know, the, uh, the most important person is me and I will do anything to survive. And so there's a lot of survival instinct stuff going on in it. Um, it, it has, uh, I will say it has, and everybody agrees whether they like his art or dislike his art. Everybody agrees on the ending that it mm. absolute um, rips your heart out of your chest. And it is a um, very emotional ending that is perfect for the book. Oh, yeah. It, I mean, that, that whole last issue was brilliant. Yeah. It was so well done. It, I mean, it had it ended any other way, right? I can't even imagine. So I think I think this is going to translate incredibly well to a show. This is, it's going to be really good, I think. Now, this is an animated show? Uh, no, live, live action. action. Live, live action. action. Cool. On Netflix, uh, Robert Downey Jr. is producing it, I think. Yeah. Oh, that's great. Right. Okay. Mm. Um, and there see. will be more. Jeff Lemire is working on uh, more Sweet Tooth. So I don't know how that's going to work. I, everybody I says that. How is that going to I don't know how it's going to work. <laughs> But it's working. I don't know. It could. It could be fill in the gaps. That could be. It, which I would be very interested in. That yeah. I would like that. Yeah, the further adventures of Young Sweet Tooth or something. Mm -hmm. uh, we're, cool. getting, we're getting lots of compliments on our uh, shirts. Wow! Now we have to like we're nice. Not that we already don't, but now we just have to. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I got a little um, baby Yoda in the pocket here. <laughs> Thank now you, that uh, we know people are paying so much attention. <laughs> Crazy Jane thinks Jeff Lemire's art style would look great animated. Well, they, they were working on an Essex County animation a long time ago, so I don't think that's ever coming. But that would be really great to see animated. Yeah. Happy Saturday to you, Chris. Thank you very much. Um, Lloyd Wong... Chi Lin Yang, Jeff Lemire, that's two books with the same writer artist. I love creators that pull double duty. You're not the only one that loves Lemire's art either. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Um, that's true, though. I That's incredibly impressive. Yeah. And I always, I think I connect more to those books every time I read them. You know, when I think about my favorites, I think Jeff Lemire, I think Tilly Walden, who also yeah. writes and like who does everything in her books, you know, there's something about that where it's like, no one else manipulated anything. No one else contributed to it. It's all them. And I, I, I personally love that and prefer that when I can get it. 
I I don't know that I uh, really look for it, but uh, it's always a pleasant surprise. And it, it always also pisses me off when it's done really well, <laughs> because that means the creator's doubly talented. It's like, not only are you a good writer, but you're a good illustrator too. <laughs> what, uh, how about I get a teaspoon of that creativity or something? I feel them. Yeah. <laughs> um, so uh, Sweet Tooth is just a remarkable book. And, you know, you can tell we both love it. What year did these come out? Because this is how, when I read it, 2011, 12, 13, 2016. Okay, that is when I read it then. Um, I don't think I even upgraded. I just grabbed the books when they came out. Yeah, I had the paperbacks for a long time. And I do, I hope one day there's going to be an Omni. That would be a great size for an Omni. Would you trade in your hardcovers for an Omni? Uh, I'd probably go crazy and keep both. <laughs> oh, you get both? Oh. That's, that's how much I love him. Oh, wow. Yeah. <laughs> Don't sell yourself short, Jess. You are talented at smuggling and forgetting. Taylor knows well because he's always telling me ideas for shows and I'm always forgetting them. And then I always tell him my uh, package package smuggling stories. Uh, you know, oh, my wife's up in the shower. Time to go out on the porch and bring in all 40 packages. Uh, uh, we, I, we've we uh, hooked another one. Hello from London. I don't know why I watch your videos just as now I want to buy Sweet Tooth. You're a bad influence. Ah, uh, Sweet Tooth is a great book and you will be very happy with it. Definitely. And I think Chris is right. I think this will be omnibized. Omnibized. I'm hoping for it. Yeah. Um, deluxe hardcovers are hard to find now. Yeah, I have them all in single issues. It was too slow to upgrade. I think uh, Kristen's right that, that we will get an Omni for it. What a sweet tooth. Omni is probably we'll find the hardcovers in the UK. Yeah, number one is very hard. Uh, and we have 40 number uh, volume. What is the expensive yep. one? Yeah. Wait a second. Kristen <laughs> buys multiple copies and editions of books that aren't Buffy. Here's no, I, I don't. Know. I don't actually. I do with Buffy because, you know, I had the old Dark Horse stuff. Now I'm buying it again on Boom because I want Boom to continue. So I'm like supporting what they're coming out with, you know. I get it. They're also coming out with nicer editions. And I'm like, I need the pretty ones. <laughs> the pretty ones. Yeah. Like the old <laughs> Angel paperbacks are really ugly. This is beautiful. I love it. Uh, wow, I don't even understand this question. Maybe you do. Oh, yeah. Of course. <laughs> Collabed with Gord Downey, OG, the Tragically Hip. Man, get with your music. You know the Tragically Hip, right? No? I think I've heard you gotta of be, You got to get more into Canadian music. <laughs> They're huge in Canada. Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. okay. Uh, yeah, Lemire did uh, album art for him and a whole, like, uh, booklet came in it. It's like a, it's like a big, like record sized illustration of like lyric, all of the lyrics for like every song in that album. Oh, it's really cool. Okay. Mm. And they are a Canadian band then. And Lord Wong, are you Canadian? I have a feeling you might be, but I don't, uh, I don't know. But Gord Dowdy is the, uh, tragically hip, uh, lead mm -hmm. singer, guitarist, whatever. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, yeah, you are, you and Reed definitely uh, know a lot more about uh, that group, uh, type of music, which is pretty much anything after 1999. <laughs> mm, tragically Hip were around in the 90s. Were they? Yeah. Uh, uh, the nineties, I think, were spent listening to Spice Girls in the car every day on the way to school. <laughs> same, same. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
uh, apparently half the chat is Canadian. <laughs> nice. Okay. Oh, Calgary, nice. My favorite band of all time is Tegan and Sarah. So I'm I love Canadian music. They're quite Canadian. Uh, okay. Uh, he passed away of ooh brain cancer a few years ago. Yeah, it's a sad day. <laughs> tragically hip later. Yeah, Gordon. Ooh, gosh, that's awful. Sucks. Super sucks. It does. Um. I swear, Kristen never had that many omnibus in the background. Last time I watched one of your. Dumb I didn't move. <laughs> Still in the corner. Oh yeah, I don't think we'd ever seen. Um, I see what Me? you're talking about. I don't think we'd ever seen that shelf of those shelves before. Yeah. I, think I didn't really move. I think we'd only seen the hardcovers below them. Oh wait, I think Reed did move this desk a little, so. Oh. Maybe that's what happened. I think so, yeah. Yeah. That's my Marvel shelf. So it's all omnis and then hardcovers and then paperbacks are down below. You can't see them. Nicely organized. Yeah, thanks. Um, okay, so uh, we got off on a tangent there, but it was a good <laughs> one because uh, yeah, Reed did move the uh, desk. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Whoops. <laughs> cool. Um, so the next book uh, we can cover, I really liked uh, just the description of it uh, grabbed me. But that is the uh, strain. There was this one. I, I think I recommended this one because I... Uh, no, you think no, you were no, it? Well, I read I read the first few singles back then, so I've known about this for quite a long time. Okay. <laughs> also, there's a cat on the cover. Come on now. Yeah, well, that's true. I, the way I discovered it, though, was I don't think it was through you. I think I just read the description on IST one day and, or decided to order it. Oh, so that's it possible. A happy, happy accident then that yeah. you suggested it. Definitely. Um, is this guy's name really Juan Doe? I, that, sounds Barely. Like, that sounds like a punk rock name from the 80s. <laughs> yeah, it kind of does. Um, but anyway, we've got an astral traveling cat um, <clears throat> in, the near, in the far future, a military industrial complex reigns over all humanity. This is a good picture. The art's really good. And actively destroys distant alien worlds. The galaxy's only hope can be found through an unlikely pair, an astral projecting cat named Lou and his loving owner, Kiara. Trading nine lives for the well-being of billions, their revolt is a battle for love, friendship, compassion, and the soul of humanity. Um, I don't... Um, the owner has uh, invented a way... Uh, for a little vocal box that goes around uh, Lou's neck that uh, gives Lou the ability to speak. And so you uh, rudiment, rudimentary English, uh, you get uh, to hear what is on Lou's mind. And Lou's a pretty smart cat that can astral travel and tells the government where there are these other planets uh, that Lou and his owner have been led to believe are uh, to be used. Here's some really cool paneling to be used uh, for their uh, mineral resources for the betterment of uh, their own planet. And I don't want to say any more because I think that'll wreck it. Um, but Lou is taken advantage of um lou has lou the cat has the astral projecting ability um and they uh it's it's actually i found it to be um pretty emotional because you're using a, a cat which anytime you use a pet in a book you're yanking at my heartstrings like um we three or pride of baghdad or something like that 
Um, oh, look at these colors. Uh, beautiful. Um, yeah. And Lou is just a great little cat and being taken advantage of. Um, and you wonder, how, I wondered, how is Lou going to figure this out? What happens when he figures it out and what's he going to do about it? Um, I thought it was really well, um, beautiful illustrations, really well written, really cool concept. Uh, this is also now one of my favorite reads of the second half of the sucky year notice 2020. <laughs> yeah, I, I feel the same. Of course, this art is gorgeous. I've never seen this person's art and it's just, it's beautiful. The colors and everything just go perfectly with the story. Uh, it is one and done. So you guys get the whole story within this. It's Dark Horse. Um, and of course, you know, there's a cat on the cover. I had to get it. But yeah, Lou is, <laughs> Lou is an amazing character, no matter how you feel about pets and comics. It's, it's great. Yeah. It's great. Yeah. Lou is really amazing. And I thought the ending was well done, too. I was worried. You know why I was yeah. worried. Yeah, I was yeah. worried. It was a good ending. I was worried, too. I was worried as of about a quarter of the way through the book. Yeah. I started getting, oh, this is funny. Um, <laughs> I came here to see reviews of Johnny Ryan books. Am I in the right place? <laughs> Yesterday, uh, I am not a fan of Johnny Ryan. But there was a little part of a chat uh, when I listed the comics that IST had for sale this week. And I think Prison Pit is a book that Johnny Ryan does. And there was five or six people that were like, yeah, Prison Pit. And I'm like, you guys are sick because he's really <laughs> sick. He draws and writes this the basest, raunchiest, grossest stuff. But... Uh, lots of people with really good taste in comics, like Taylor here, lo <laughs> loves him. So um, that's the that's the joke here. That uh, I I am not a fan of Johnny Ryan, but there were a lot of people that were. I did see a lot of people in the group talking about that. I'm like, what is that? So now I know. <laughs> and that not is not for a me. Christian book. No, no, no. I can save you the time. I appreciate that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you, you, uh, it is not, uh, it's not a book for you. Um, let's see. Whoa, I don't even understand this question. Oh, I haven't read, I have not read Haiku. I've wanted to. Uh, that's a volleyball manga. I oh. love sports comics. I've talked about this before. And with Dragon Hoops, it keeps happening. There's a lot of sports comics, Western and uh, manga that I really like. And Ping Pong is also one. I want to check out Ping Pong. And they're nice little hardcovers. So both of those I would like to check out. I'm going to have to do that. Ah, uh, okay. I thought that was like a genre of manga, but it's just a book about Ping Pong. They're Yeah, they're both sports, so sports yeah. of ping pong from what okay. i've gathered yeah okay it is weird I, I don't care at all about sports but i like sports comics and it keeps yeah. happening same with <laughs> riley riley's got a huge collection of sports manga and i don't yeah, think it's a good time sports at all well and i think even with dragon hoops like you said you know it's not just about the sport right you do get to dive into these characters and their feelings and how they feel about the sport and i think that's where it clicks for me, right? It's like, I care about these characters and I care about the, what they're going through and they just happen to be on a sports team. Okay. You know, <laughs> then I care about it. Right. Yeah. Versus yeah, if exactly. I just watch that on TV, I don't care. I don't know <laughs> these people. <laughs> uh, let's see. Where is Reed's awesome Popeye book that used to be in the background? You know what? Let me grab it off the floor. What? <laughs> so wow. that's what happened. This desk was moved because we were moving some stuff in here. And this definitely fell on the floor. It's right here. You can check it out now. It's Old Man Popeye. Uh, it's a book. Have you seen this, Jess? No. Okay. So Reed did a little... Well, it's a thin comic, but it's about Popeye as an old man. <laughs> and uh, he's quite angry. Olive oil has died, which is sad. Oh. <laughs> but uh, but yeah, he, he draws a good Popeye, though. Look at him. 
So you can get this uh, on Reed's store in V-Site. If you just Google Reed Chancellor Reed store in V-Site. Reed did this book, yeah. Oh, oh, oh. I didn't pick up on that. This is yeah. really cool looking. Yeah, it's it's really neat. Oh, and I think it's pop, really right? well done. Like, <laughs> I am what I slam. There him goes. So he's he's punching people. So he's an old man, but that's what uh old man oh, Popeye. Those are oh, not like the idea of this. Yeah. And you know, this this is like really like it's really soft. You know how I like textures of books. Yeah, it's very yeah. soft. And I'm not just saying that it is. <laughs> and let me let me put up a trade. So this is like it's a pretty big issue. Oh. It's nice and oversized. And you can get it for quite cheap on Reed Chancellor's Store Envy site. <laughs> Just Google Reed Chancellor's Store Envy. Nice. Yeah. He's doing a, a nice bundle of like all his comics right now, and you can get this with him. Uh, that is cool. Yeah, it's I, really neat. I've, I've liked the first two that I've read. Let me put it back in the background for you, <laughs> Taylor. <laughs> oh, he's read it. Cool. Taylor says Old Man Popeye is so good. Awesome. That's I'm great. glad you enjoyed it. Uh, Surya, thank you very much. I appreciate that. Um, let's see. Did you see that? It just fell again. Uh, uh -oh. <laughs> oh, no. Any hopes from the Marvel announcement Omar's got coming up this week? Uh, any hopes for what? Well, he's announcing new books and uh, some reprints. So, oh. um, I don't know. Okay. Uh, well, I if he's going to announce new books and reprints, I would think that that's uh, pretty exciting news on both fronts. Yeah, definitely. And Ruse Roost, why does Omar get to announce Marvel <laughs> books? Why not y'all? <laughs> Well, he's the one that has the connection at Marvel. That's right. <laughs> yeah, he knows the guy at Marvel, and we do not. So uh, we could make up stuff for you, though, if you'd like. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't think you'd like, though. Right. Um, let's see, manga somehow makes sports interesting. It's true. Um, Crazy Jane, I think the Marvel box set has been delayed, so no announcement. Do we do we know what the theme of the Marvel box set is this year? I don't think it's been told. Just we know what's coming. Oh, okay. Unless I'm wrong. Crazy Jane, correct me if I'm wrong. I'd like to know what the theme is. I have some of those. Jess, would you ever want a live action movie of whatever happened to the man of tomorrow? Uh, that is a good question. I think I'd be happiest if it was an animated movie uh, in the style of Kurt Swan, because that is how I remember those characters the most. So I would think I would like it animated rather than live action. Uh, because I couldn't take it to see a live dog like Crypto lose his life. That no. always makes me cry in that book. I need every comic with an animal like at the forefront of it. And every movie and everything that a, a pet is in. Tell me at the beginning. Does it die? Because if it does, I don't want to be a part of it. Okay. Yeah. So I, I, mean, I like a lot of comics with animals in it. And I really wish people would spoil me at the beginning. I just want to know because I can't handle it. <laughs> yeah, no, you're exactly right. It's rough. Yeah. Especially crypto. The, you know, the doggy that I grew up loving is a little mm. cool. And uh, I am well aware that uh, comic books are not real. I understand <laughs> that. Uh, especially this one. But uh, it's hard still. when you're invested. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, let's see. I have a strong feeling the box set will involve Spitterman. Okay. <laughs> oh, Omar said the box set was delayed in his live stream today. And I actually would totally get behind this. The Simpsons Omni. That would be cool. Good comics. Does Marvel have the rights to those? Uh, that I didn't think they printed those. Um, 
what was it bongo comics or something yeah who, who bongo i don't know and maybe it was marvel i have no idea i, I just know, remember bongo like you were saying yeah no i don't know uh The Reed Cancer Mini Comics Bundle is so worth the money. I'm going to highlight it on my channel this week sometime. That's awesome. That is Taylor Talks Comics. It is so worth the money, though, guys. As someone who's read it all, I agree. Uh, Dark Horse does strayed, Brian. Dark Horse does that. Um... <clears throat> Um, 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 let's see. We have two more books to go to. Um, which one would you like to talk about? I have uh, one of them digitally and one of them um, real or whatever the word is. Well, you, you picked that up, so let's do it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Let me get... Sorry to take this off, Reed. I know you like looking at it, but <laughs> uh, Bongo Comics did do them, and they went under in 2018. Oh, okay, that's interesting. Hmm, I didn't know that. Uh, okay, so uh, Farmhand Rob Guillory, the artist from Chew. Uh, Here's one, another one for you, Lloyd Wong. He writes and illustrates this book. Do you, would you like to um, talk it up while I show uh, pictures of it, Kristen? Uh, would you be able to read that, that back of that? Because sure. I don't know how to summarize this book. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good point. <laughs> Jedediah Jenkins is a simple farmer, but his cash crop isn't corn or soy. He grows fast, healing, highly customizable, human organs for years jed's organic transplants have brought healing to many but deep beneath the soil of the jenkins family farm there is something sinister taking root today this dark seed will begin to sprout and the jenkins family will be the first to taste its bitter fruit from Eisner award-winning comic artist Rob Guillory comes a new darkly comedic series about science gone sinister and agriculture gone apocalyptic. I didn't see any comedy in this. I didn't, I, well, I guess yeah. I saw a little comedy, but it, it seemed um, we don't really get a chance to see the growing and this is exactly what it sounds like i mean he's he'll grow a tree of or a, a plant that will have fingers or kidneys uh toes stuff like that and we don't really get to see him in the heyday of doing good for people or doing well for them um we see uh now everything's starting to go haywire and uh yeah i think we get a few little flashbacks so like he's helped a lot of people with like you know let's say you said kidney like a kidney disease or like someone who's going to die if they don't get some sort of transplant or they're able to see again and those sort of things right but yeah now everything's kind of going nuts uh that yeah here's like a, a forest of fingers <laughs> ready to be pruned yeah, if you can't handle like blood and body parts and things like that, this is not the book for you. <laughs> you know, even though it's quite like his art's very cartoony, but yeah. uh, it was still pretty brutal. Yeah. Um, his son comes back after being estranged and brings his family with him to the family farm. His older sister's there who helps run it, and his dad is uh, older now, having problems with, uh, like, the, 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 the mayor and, or the, uh, the town or the people, townspeople. Things are kind of going haywire for him. Um, volume 2 gets crazier, and then Volume 3 just goes off the rails. <laughs> and for me, it did. I was just like, 
whoa, what is going on? So I don't know yeah. what volume four is going to be like. Yeah, three went nuts. Uh, <laughs> and someone's asking if there's only one trade. Yeah, there's three trades out right now. Yeah. Uh, I'm also hoping there will be a hardcover, Brian, um, because I will totally get it. I love Rob's art, and I'm a big fan of his writing in this. I thought it was really well done. And you're right, though. Like, three was nuts. I don't know where the story is going to go, and I kind of love that, right? It's it's very unique. I've definitely never read anything like this, which is a compliment I feel like we can't give a lot of books anymore, you know? That's true. Yeah, that's a good point. It's, this is a holy... Uh, original story with a lot of um, uh, a lot of neat, uh, brand new, fresh ideas that I I got to hand it to him, hand it to him. But, uh, <laughs> uh, he his imagination really did a good job on this because it is um, it's uh, it's like nothing I've ever read before. Like you, know, like you said, um, and uh, Streakazoid's asking good nuts. Uh, it, it is good, but it, it is it's wild. It's it's. I thought it was good nuts for sure. Yeah, I think so. I yeah. I still want to read it, and I want to find out what happens um, because well, now. Especially- yeah, especially that character. Um, I won't spoil anything, but you know what I'm talking about. Anybody who's read it knows what I'm talking about. The one that like really goes nuts. Yeah. I'm like, okay, I want to know what their deal is, right? Like, I got to know what's happening further with this character, you know? Right. And how it's going to affect everyone and what's happening. And yeah. yeah. That character has, uh, uh, is involved with a lot of other characters. Um, so, yeah, it's kind of it's kind of a small town. The whole yeah. thing said it right. So like everybody kind of knows everyone, and there's just a, a lot of people start coming back to that town because they had implants or they had uh, you know limbs implanted from this farm, and things start going bad. It's just like okay, I gotta know what happens. Yeah, yeah. Um, and and the art has. Uh, we were saying the art is really good and it's um i i uh, have found it i'm losing my grip here on the books so just let me put them down um i uh i lost my train of thought oh uh the art is great and the the writing is great and he's uh, chris and i don't know where he's headed but we want to know, and we're on board. I think I speak for both of us when I say uh, we want to know where this this crazy train's going. Definitely, um, and I feel like if it's popular enough, like they, I think they would have to make a hardcover. You know, if you like Chew, I think you're gonna like this. Um, John Layman wrote Chew. Rob did the art, but Rob is killing it with the writing. I really like the writing style that he has. So. I think if you were into that, like you, you'll be into this too. They're both wild and crazy and unique ideas. Yeah. Uh, Real Big Cohen. Uh, I can't find your video now for what you're excited for in August. Was there earlier? Yeah, I um, I have a problem with YouTube that um, if I don't release um, a video a full day, if, if I don't set the release uh, time a full day uh, forward, then uh, not very many people get notified. I just found out today. So I had to pull it and then I'm, I'm re-releasing it tomorrow at 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Um, and hopefully everybody gets notified that way. But I'm, I'm re-releasing it uh, tomorrow uh, just to see if I can get more people notified that I'm waiting a full 24 hours. Nobody else has this problem but me. I tried to uh, uh, have it released two hours from when I made it, and I think like three people found out about it. But actually, there are enough people in this chat that have commented on it that maybe I uh, did it prematurely, that I yanked it prematurely. Maybe more people got a notification than I'm... uh, and giving it credit for. <laughs> I would love to hear this. 
Oh, a hundred percent. I, I can, <laughs> of course, do it in my sleep. I won't do it here, but I can totally do it in my sleep. <laughs> Uh, here's actually a really good question for both of us, and I'd be interested in your opinion. I don't know uh, what your opinion is on this. You know, I've read Watchmen, and I think that's about it. Oh, okay. And I haven't read it recently. So, I don't know. Um, I do hear he has, like, rape in every single one of his comics, so that's something that probably has an H grade yeah. in this time. Um, I don't know that I'm even interested, honestly. Like, it, I don't know. I, I, I hear Swamp Thing may be aged well. I would like to read a Swamp Thing. Uh, I think Swamp Thing is aged well. I don't think Killing Joke aged well at all. Uh, that is actually a book I don't even own. I don't, I, it, it, it aged so poorly that I don't even own it in any form anymore. You know, I own it, but I haven't read it. I was oh. gifted that one. So yeah. that makes me not want to read it. I don't know. Yeah, it was, I don't know. Some Something about it at the time it came out, it seemed groundbreaking and unconventional and like, whoa, this is really compelling. And But now I'm reading it and I'm like, what is his problem with women? I mean, why is he doing this all the time to women uh, in every book, especially Batgirl? I mean, he just really dishes it out really heavily to Batgirl in that particular book. And um, I don't, I'm trying to think of, uh, I haven't read V for Vendetta in a while. That's probably aged okay. Uh, Watchmen's still fine. Um, I think League of Extraordinary Gentlemen is kind of a personal taste book. I, I like it. Um, I like, uh, I like Promethea and Top Ten. Those have aged perfectly well. Promethea is really great. Uh, From Hell. I don't know. I'd have to read From Hell again. Oh, I've got a deluxe up there of it with a companion. Huh. <laughs> Maybe I looked right up there for it. Books just appear on your shelves now. Uh, yeah. Wow. Uh, so I don't know. Yeah, that's a good question. I, I the um, his his H.G. Lovecraft stuff, uh, his Lovecraftian stuff is problematic for a lot of people. It is it, the treatment of women in that book, those books, uh, is is pretty. Uh, I don't know. It's remarkably tone deaf. It's it is it's it's uh it's kind of disturbing i'm trying to think of the right word for it um it seems it seems full and doesn't really fit it it, it uh, um the treatment of women in in those or or uh lovecraftian books doesn't really drive the story forward and feels gratuitous to me is the best way I can say it. Um, I feel like that's all I hear about his books anymore. And it, it just doesn't make me want to pick anything up, you know? Yeah. I think I could recommend Promethea to you, but that's probably about it. Top 10. Uh, those are both really fun. Uh, but that's probably really about it. Uh, let's see. Do, 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 do. I just read Gail Simone got her start on Simpsons Bongo comics. That's fun. Really? Uh, let's see. Uh, yes, and I loved it. Promethea. We did? <laughs> I don't remember that. I don't either. I it, would have watched that. <laughs> it would have been 45 minutes of Faria. <laughs> I was going to say, I would like to. Alan Moore. <laughs> yeah, the Barbara Gordon part is especially brutal. It is very much so. I've heard about that. Yeah.
Uh, let's see. Oh, Tom Strong is fun. There's no rape in that. Tom Strong is very fun. It's sad when that's your bar, though, right? Yeah. <laughs> hey, this one's good, and there's no rape. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that's, you know, and it's just been uh, this year that I've noticed it, that it's been brought up, that 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 it seems to be a part of all of his comics. I had I had never put that together. Um, so, yeah, Tom Strong is a lot of fun. Uh, let's see. We do have one more. Wait, any thoughts on the Tom King, J. Lee situation? Uh, we may not want to get into that. I, I feel bad for both parties. That, that was not handled well, I think. I think there's problems on both sides there. Yeah. Yeah. I don't think we have anything to add to that. And I think if we could, it would just be a whole other hour show. <laughs> like, you yeah, know, and I actually don't know enough about it. So that I, I mean, I just know what I've read on Twitter. And that's probably not enough information for me to make an informed opinion on it. Yeah, I feel that. Uh, okay, we have one more book that we uh, read. And this was uh, all you. You suggested this one. I hadn't even heard of it. You know, and I suggested it on the fact that it's a, a DC young adult book. Yeah. And I like the cover. <laughs> That's all I knew. <laughs> Primer. It's a pretty cool cover. That is. So, uh, yeah, Primer's about that main girl, which I, I've read it so long now, I don't remember her name. <laughs> Do you remember her name? No, I barely remember the story. We read it like a month ago. I know. I'm like, oh, yeah. I even forgot that was a book we read. I was like, oh, there's another one? Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's it. I forgot to grab my iPad because I also read it digitally. It is on Hoopla for anyone who has Hoopla. Yeah. Uh, you can read it there. Um, but I, Ashley. Ashley. Okay. So main character Ashley, um, she is in foster care. And uh, she's finally adopted into a home of these two kind of like one guy, uh, the, the dad is sort of a, a hipster dude, right? Uh, he's very entertaining in his hipster ways. And their first time adopted, they're adop they adopted her, right? They didn't just foster her. Is that right? Yeah. Okay. Uh, and the mother's like a scientist. So at some point, Ashley... I think she's digging in her mom's closet and she finds these paints and Ashley's like uh, into art and she's like, Oh, this is cool. Like, let me play with these paints. So what, so I think one of the paints gets on her and then she like turns invisible or starts levitating or something. Right. Like she gets some sort of power from the paints exactly. and, and then realizes these paints have all these powers. So she starts putting them on her body uh, and going out to like, fight crime and like do superhero stuff uh, until she's caught and it becomes like a much bigger deal than she thought it would be. And then there's of course a mess and she has to get out of it. Um, but it's super, I don't know. I had a good time. I thought it was really fun. Uh, she was an interesting character. I will say I got to the end though. And I was like, Hey, is there going to be more of this? <laughs> like, I believe that's how I felt at the end. Again, it's been a bit, um, but I like the art. And I, I liked her right. story, and I thought the characters were really uh, well done and modern. Yeah, I thought this was a really uh, interesting and fun concept, and uh, I agree. The art is great. Um, I'm trying to uh, get to the part where she gets paint on herself, but there's lots of gorgeous colors. This is a really gorgeously colored uh, book. Yeah, this is definitely one of those standout, like, I want to know who colored this book because it's so beautiful. Uh, there's so, yeah, there's a really fun color. She uses a lot of spray paints because she does, like, street art and stuff. Uh, and then the paints themselves that she finds that have magic powers are very colorful, too. So, yeah, the colors are booming and bright and beautiful throughout. Yeah, I'm just trying to find a... Oh, here's... 
this is the government that has the paint and there's the mom right there i think yeah so the government essentially wants to do like evil things with the paints so the mom takes the paints home so they can not do that but right. then ashley starts using them and it becomes a whole problem and situation yeah here's the mom which is hiding them. and uh let's see trying to oh here it is this is when she and a friend start playing around with the paints yeah i like this book a lot i it's happened that uh that i so far i've liked all the young adult books by dc that if that seems to be where all the really fresh original ideas are right now is these young adult books yeah and I, i'm hoping there's gonna be more from this particular universe i would like to see volume two of this um because it was just fun i think it's a great it's a great hoopla read so if anybody has hoopla you know you don't have to invest the money in it if you don't want but i think it's also a good uh, all ages book so if you have you know teens or little younger than teens tweens they would really enjoy this too but us adults had a good time with it as well yeah <laughs> yeah i dug it a lot And it was a quick, fun read. Good for the times. Again, we're always wanting the uh, the lighter reads here, and I thought this was a good one. Yeah, you're exactly right. This was perfect for that. Yeah, yeah. I liked it enough that I may just go ahead and get it physically, um, especially if there's more volumes that come out. I hope there will be. Um, it was a fun universe, fun characters. I don't know who did that art. I can't remember, but yeah, it has really good art. I would like to see more of their stuff. Let's see if I can find out. Author and artist Jennifer Murrow is the writer. Thomas Krajewski and Gretel Lusky does the colors. Nice. They were all great. Yeah. Yeah, I, I really liked it a lot. Uh, Crazy Jane, I'm glad you think so. I've, I've got a, a head start on them, and I'm going to try and read as many as I can. It's probably, actually, it's probably going to be a two-parter. There's so many books. I didn't, had no idea they had released so many of these young adult uh, titles. I picked up about 10 of them. They're really not expensive. They're dirt cheap no, they're, box. they're really yeah. cheap and if any of you watching like are interested in them uh like i said hoopla has them but also if they're at like every local library because they are big in the all ages comics uh realm of libraries so i feel like they're at like every library i've checked which is another way to dive in if you're not interested in putting out the money at this point are libraries open again where you are yeah they've been open Ah, I wonder if the library is open here. I have yep. about 45 boxes of comics <laughs> that I need Bring to there. Um, yeah, I know mine is uh, when you return anything, they quarantine the books for like two days and then they put them out. Oh, okay. So they're doing like special little things. And of course, you got to wear your masks and distant inside and such. Yeah. Okay. Uh, no, I haven't watched it yet, Sam. How do you know that I have it? Are you really Cycle Cleveland? Because <laughs> Cycle Cleveland sent that to me. And only Cycle Cleveland knew that. Or maybe you were in the chat that day and you have a really good memory. Oh, we both have thoughts. Uh, yeah, I loved it. That's my <laughs> thought. <laughs> it was very creepy, and I loved it. Now I'll never look at circles the same. <laughs> uh, I am well known for not particularly caring for manga. Uh, this is one of the only ones that I read all the way through. And uh, 
I, I have an easier time reading Ito, Ito's style. Um, I'm able to follow it easier on the on the page because that's really where my problem is. Is reading it backwards. I just can't follow it well enough. And actually, I'm I'm not really into the stories. I wasn't into the story of uh, of uh, Berserk at all. I didn't find that story, uh, the first book, very interesting. But Ito twice now has made me almost throw up. Uh, dissolving classroom mm -hmm. and um i i think shiver was it shiver with the other was, shiver what? with with the oil story yeah oh yeah, yeah, yeah that was like oh, the worst God. of all yeah oh. yeah don't think about it <laughs> oh. why'd you ask <laughs> wow yeah 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 he has a, a book coming out this month another collection and there's one toward the end of the year i think so i'm looking forward to those Oh, you're welcome. I'm glad I can introduce. Yeah, the Eisners this year were just all the Kristen wins. <laughs> all of the Kristen books won, and I'm very excited. Not all of them, but a lot of them. I was like, hey, yeah. I know this book. Hey, I love this book. Yeah, it was great. On last Sunday's show, when Lou was reading off the Eisners, I was able to pull a bunch of them out and said, hey, Kristen recommended this. <laughs> hey, this is a Kristen book. Hey, that's a Kristen book. Yeah. You were yeah. on a roll. And we've both talked about one of the big winners uh, was Laura Dean Keeps Breaking Up With Me. Yeah. Uh, the book itself won, the writer and artist won, and they all deserve it. This art was beautiful. Yeah. You know, and we, we talked, we had a, we did this on some show. We talked about it. Right. Yeah, this art is just beautiful. And of course, um, what, who did, was it Tamaki? Right? Oh, yeah, there her name is. Yeah. Mariko Tamaki, um, of course, wrote it, and she's wonderful in everything she does. So, yeah. And I love this art style. It's great. But I will say I showed the uh, the best friend that's in love with the girl. I showed that picture to both Lou and Gabe, and they thought it was a boy, too. Well, her best friend wasn't in love with her, so there's that. <laughs> I thought her best friend was in love with her. No, she, her best friend just wanted her time. <laughs> You know, oh, she was like her to be her away friend. from Laura and spend time with her. Yeah, and dump Laura because she's terrible. Oh well, yeah, Laura was terrible. Yeah, and it's not about uh, what gender you think this person is, Jess. It's just the fact that anyone can look however they want, and that's how it is. Um. I'm, okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, you were like they thought it too, and it's like, well, well okay. I mean, <laughs> well, no, I wasn't saying that. Um, I didn't mean to. Well, I I think you took it the wrong way. I because um, I was really. Uh, you said that it was my uh, uh, my femininity bias or my or my uh, gender bias or something that made me um, struggle with whether or not that was a, a boy or a girl. So I just wondered what those guys thought too. I'm oh, not. Okay. I'm not, I, I would never, I could never say anything mean to you anyway. So don't think that was a mean thing. <laughs> no, I, I didn't think that. I'm just like, I don't look at this character and think either way. I don't think it matters. You know, that's not uh, something I was thinking about the whole time. So. Oh, okay. Well, I see, I see that point even more than that it doesn't matter. Yeah. I, I just don't think it matters. And it, I mean, Okay. You know what I mean? It's like... <laughs> yeah, I was confused then because I thought the best friend was in love with her. Then to I, me, that takes on a different tone in the story then. Um, I don't remember it like that. I think I think she just well, wanted I, her attention. I, yeah, you're probably right. Because at the end, she was like, yeah, I got a boyfriend. Right? Like, that was part of the story. And yeah. she's like, you didn't even know because you were too busy dealing with Laura and her nonsense. Okay. Right. Okay. But, you know, I should reread this because maybe I'm wrong, but I think that's how it went down because, you know, no, she I, had, I won't ruin it for anyone watching, but she had that big, big storyline. Yeah. Where you're like, oh, you didn't you didn't know that. She didn't know that. Uh, Freddie didn't know that because Freddie was too busy with Laura. She didn't right. know this big thing that was going on with her friend, you know? Right. Yeah. And her friend was bitter about it. Right. 
Yeah, I mean, probably bothered because I would have been, you know? It's like, yeah. man, you deal with stupid Laura the whole time. Right, yeah, that's... You, know, you I read this and you're like, oh, Laura, why do you keep doing this? I definitely got that point across that I was not a fan of Laura. Yeah. When I was talking about it. Uh, she, she is not a person that I would give uh, a second chance to to break up with me again. Yeah, maybe I'm wrong though. I'm like looking through this and like, was she in love? Like, I don't, <laughs> I don't remember that at all. Well, we read that. No, we read that a long ago. time ago. So it's I could, it's easy for for me to be misremembering it. I mean, they are dancing together at the end. I don't uh, know. Well, girls dance together all the time. <laughs> I mean, they look like they're dancing together. Oh. Okay. I thought they might. I don't know. I don't know either. <laughs> okay. It, it got awards and it was a Kristen book. Yeah, and it was good. We liked it a lot. That's the point. <laughs> uh, let's see. Laura Dean is incredible. Thanks for putting it on my radar. Nice. Glad you liked it, Joe. And the whole time, the best friend was in a toxic relationship, too. Because she was in a relationship with Freddie, right? With her best friend? Well, Laura Dean was. Wait, the best the best friend, is he saying the best friend, the toxic relationship was with With Freddie? someone else. No, 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 with someone else. Oh, with someone else. Yeah, that's, that's right. Fred, Freddie knows what's up. Freddie knows what's up about Freddie. Okay. <laughs> yeah, that was it. Yeah, Freddie says, I don't think she uh, she liked her that way, but I thought the same thing before the end. So maybe okay. it's our art story bias. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Well, and that's, you know what? That's another great thing about this book, right? And probably why it won awards, because you can interpret things differently. Uh, and to, to the credit of like what we were talking about earlier, it's great to see a character who even looks like this, right? Because uh, you don't... Is that like, her best friend? That's her best friend. Um, let me get a better... What's, I forget her best friend's name already. I, I do too. That's why you just keep saying her best friend. Man, now I can't even. <laughs> and that was my point of even bringing it up because, you know, I know plenty of uh, women who have short hair, <laughs> right? Like, and that's I'm like, okay. I also have short hair. And you don't see that a lot. It is 2020 and you do not see depictions of women with short hair a lot. You just don't. Oh, Okay. Which is stupid, <laughs> but it's true, right? It's like, man, doodle. that's great. Go goose, got it. Doodle. Doodle, that's right. Yeah. We'll have to revisit this. That, yeah. would, that would be fun. I'm looking yeah, through it now. I'm like, man, that was a good time. And clearly we don't remember some of it. Well, yeah, and I feel like uh, the more of these kind of books, independent books I read, uh, the more educated I am on the different styles of writing and uh, artwork. Um, so I'm picking up, I may pick up things in a rereading that I missed the first time. Well, it reminds me of like, you know, this and Snapdragon, right? There were elements to the story that you didn't catch, but I did, or maybe vice versa. Right. Right. And that makes for a good conversation, you know? Um, yeah. And even the fact like the, the gender situation here, it's just like, I just want more characters that look differently than you want them to like it. You know what I mean? It's like, maybe, maybe someone doesn't want to look out really like a woman, but is a woman. That's fine. Those people exist. Right. I want to see them depicted. Okay. You know, there's plenty of people like that. So it's cool that you see a character like that. Yeah. Okay. But I mean, Laura well, Dean. I reread that. Laura Dean, we knew she was a woman because her name is Laura Dean. But she also had short hair, right? Like, just like Doodle. Doodle just has. Uh, you know, Doodle can be uh, a woman or a man name or, you know, a non-binary yeah. person. Like, we just don't know. Right. Uh, 
Uh oh. Let's see. What's the best starting place for reading Silver Age comics for someone who hasn't read any Silver Age comics before? Uh, I would probably tell you to steer clear of Silver Age. Um, <laughs> quite, quite honestly. Uh, I like it because of the nostalgia factor. It reminds me when I was uh, a little kid and a teenager reading Silver Age stories, but rereading them now, I I can see why they're a tough read for um, uh, people maybe uh, Kristen's age uh, and around there, that age group. Um, they're, they're, not, um, they're not in any way uh, realistic. A lot of times they're goofy. Um, it, it took, uh, I, I think 1970 is when comics started to uh, write about real world issues and became more interesting. So I, I'm i hesitant to, uh, well, okay, I'll tell you a good Silver Age uh, uh, book to read is Doom Patrol. Because that's craziness, but it's really well written craziness, and the art is decent. Um, I'm surprised DC even published it. It's it's so bizarre and crazy, um, but it's a lot of fun. I would say that is a good Silver Age book to start with. Is Doom Patrol? Uh, yeah, actually, this is a good point. Legion of Superheroes is a good way to measure if you like Silver Age or not. Uh, I just did an overview of Legion of Superheroes 3 Omnibus. I don't know when I'm going to release that. Uh, now I'm afraid to release videos on YouTube because I'm afraid they're going to get lost. Um, but that was written by Jim Shooter when he was 14 years old. And those stories were a lot of fun. Uh, so you could start with Legion of Superheroes volume three and uh those are by far the most fun uh stories for uh the legion i think is volume three uh, wait there was a question for you do i count audiobooks for my annual reading goal of course audiobooks are reading do you listen to Point a lot blank. of audiobooks uh, you know, I wouldn't say a lot. Uh, I do like them, and every now and then I'll listen to one. Yeah, but it's it's, it's it's reading just as reading with your eyeballs as some people can't read their, with their eyeballs, so that's how they read. I really want to um, hear the Sandman. Yeah, man, that cast is great. Yeah, that's something I, think I really about doing want. that too. Yeah, didn't you have a good way for us to do it? We just sign up, listen to it, and then quit? Yeah, <laughs> so especially, yeah, if you've never uh, used your Audible free audio audiobook credit, you can just sign up for a free trial, you get a free credit. It's for, like, uh, I think a week, and then it'll start, or maybe it's a whole month, I don't know, because you get a credit, like, every month, uh, depending on what you choose when you pay. So, yeah, just take your audiobook uh, and then cancel. They even say on their thing, they're like, hey, this is yours to do with whatever you want. Even if you cancel, it's yours forever. Oh, really? So, so yeah, just download what you want real quick. Use that credit and then cancel it. It's You still have it forever. <laughs> I've done it a few times with different emails. So. <laughs> oh, right on. You know, that's how to do it. I think it does, like, you have to use a different card every time. Or oh, they'll know okay. you did it because it connects to your Amazon account. So, But if you've never used it, there you go. There's your credit. Like you have one Audible credit already on your account. You just have to sign up for Audible and then take that, use it for Sandman if that's what you want, and then cancel it. It's easy. Okay. Awesome. That's awesome. I will do that. I get, uh, now, they haven't released everything yet, have they? It's, are they? Is it a weekly thing or a daily thing? I don't know how they're doing that. Okay. I, don't I thought it was like a book or a certain amount of books within the one. I don't know. Oh, okay. I I didn't I'm know. Not sure. I didn't know how they were releasing it. So maybe it's. Yeah, I'm not sure either. Oh, yeah. Uh, okay. Um, any other questions before we uh, go? Leave? 
I'm leaving. I'm going. <laughs> uh, what well, are we... Go ahead. I was going to say, what are some other books that got the Eisner? Uh, because there were, I remember there were uh, two or three that had uh, your name on them. Yeah, let me, uh, let me bring this up real quick. Let's see, Eisner 2020. I know um, Raina Taugemeyer's Guts won. She's amazing. Guts was amazing. Guts is about her as a kid dealing with anxiety, but she didn't know what it was. So she starts getting all these stomach problems and just like dealing with a lot. Whoa. It's it's so well done. I love that her books are out for kids, especially like if I would have had that as a kid, I think I would have understood myself a little bit more. You know what I mean? Me too. Definitely. So, uh, oh, but it's, I mean, it's great. All ages, all ages book too. Like it's just a really, she's, she kills it. Um, yeah, Lou really struggled with that name. <laughs> Taugemeyer. It's easy. Raina Taugemeyer. <laughs> I think I, I watched that and I was like, he can't say it at all. <laughs> Raina Taugemeyer. Let's see. Well, who else was there? Um, oh yeah, Tilly Walden. One for uh, Are You Listening? Best graphic album. So yeah. good. We reviewed that and loved it. Right. Um. Oh, yeah, uh, George Takai's They Called Us Enemy. I still haven't read that, but I know, oh, you, I know I you, yeah, I know you're a big proponent of that book. Yeah, it's so good. It's so well done. It teaches you way more about everything that happened during that time than any history class at least taught me. Yeah. I don't know if it's different now. It should be. You know, it's something that, like, it's something I feel like just like with March and um, The Silence of Our Friends. I feel like those books with they call this enemy. Oh my gosh, they need to be in every school. Like those should be a whole lesson for kids because yeah. uh, that definitely would have helped me back then. Like understand more, you know. So that's a great win. Let's see what else. So I love Tilly, of course. Yeah. Yes. Does she, have we read all three of her books? Has she only put out three? She's done some like, um, let's see, do I have those near me? She's done some like little, little books. Here's one. Like the, a city inside, but it's like very small. So she's done some of these like sized books. Okay. Um, that I also really enjoy, but they're just really, really short, uh, little books. And I like those. So, but I think the big ones like on a sunbeam spinning and are you listening? Those are her big ones, the yeah. chunkier ones. Which we've of course done, and we both love. I think Honest Sunbeam is probably my favorite too. So I think we're on the same level with that. I love that book. So well done. So if y'all haven't read it, I mean, we talked about it before, but the art's beautiful. The whole presentation is beautiful. It's a great story. And you know, a lot of a lot of women with short hair in that too, huh? <laughs> <laughs> yep, you're right. You're you know. Right. And yeah, looks, right. we're just going to keep talking about women and their hair. And look, people can look however they want. That's all I'm saying. I, who's I'm, to say, with you who's 100%. To say what, a woman look, like, what a woman looks like, right? I'm with you 100%. Who's to say? Who's to say? Just a lot, of, a lot of characters, different hair in this, and I like it. <laughs> yep. Big proponent of women with short hair. <laughs> and look at however they want to look like. Same with men. Same with everyone. Same with non-binary people. Live your life, guys. Absolutely. Live your life and depict it in comics to yeah. make us talk about it. Yeah. Uh, tactician. Uh, that's a good question. I We have a, a manga subgroup where you might uh, be better off trying to sell it. Um, but there's lots of manga readers in the, in the main Facebook group. Mm -hmm. uh, I've bought some manga from the main group too okay. so it does yeah. happen you can do it um but you may there's also no, want to try the otaku's farm the sub yeah, there's no rule against it so i mean i would go ahead and try you want to sell your whole collection wow Whoa. hit us up we yeah. like to buy things <laughs> uh sandman audiobook covers the first volume okay 
of the absolute. All 20 chapters or issues are available. Nice. I was going to say, I thought it was probably like a chunk of it and not the whole thing. Cause that would be like a hundred and million hours, right? Yeah. Like, <laughs> <laughs> that's cool. Um, Omni, <laughs> which Omni? There's two yeah, Omnis well. there. When you going to do a full figure statue room tour, ignore the books, just those plastic figures. Uh, actually on my channel, I do have a statue tour. If you want to go to my channel, Omni Dogs Vault, there is a statue tour I did late last year. So it's very up to date. Uh, it's very up to date. So uh, check that out. Uh, let's see. Do, 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 do. Kristen, have you read Slam Dunk? I have. Uh, it's been several years now, but I really enjoyed it. It was very fun. The main character is a ginger. So, <laughs> gotta love that. That's why I married Reed, because <laughs> the main character of Slam It's oh, not. It's Reed totally not. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I read that before I met him, so it's been, gosh, it's been many years. Oh. But yeah, it's, it's a really fun time. It's fun. But yeah, that's a basketball manga. So, no, another one. Loves that. Yeah. Okay, well, good grief. We've been on a while. Who reads the Sam Ed audiobook? Uh, like about 40 of the greatest actors you've ever heard. It's true. That's like stacked. There's a lot of good ones. Yeah, it's amazing. What do I do when you all sign off? I'll miss you. <laughs> Thank you. That's a big compliment. Well, it seems like you should go read or, or go listen to some ska from your profile picture and your name. So that's exciting. You big? Yeah. Yeah. I saw a mustard plug when I was 16 and someone right beside me got their whole like teeth knocked out. And I was like, this is the best 16 party party. Wait, yeah. Tell me that again. A mustard plug, uh, who is a big, they're a big ska band. They oh. came to my city when I was like 16. And of course there's like people moshing and stuff. And someone like right beside me got their, teeth just kicked in by someone crowd surfing oh whoa and i was like this is the best birthday <laughs> oh <laughs> i didn't get hurt so i was fine but it was nuts yeah yeah <laughs> <laughs> and you were totally digging it. oh i was like yeah mustard plug, mustard plug. yeah <laughs> so i'm a scott fan oh my gosh that's great uh so actually i think i'm in charge of uh figuring out dinner tonight it's quarter to seven already so uh kristen where can they find you when you're not talking about comic books with me uh they can find me most sundays not tomorrow but the upcoming sunday i think that's the ninth uh with maddie or the omnibus collectors network fangirls assemble we're going to talk about our halls and reads and that's exciting because everybody loves that, right? You want to know what I bought? I already kind of showed you today, but <laughs> you want to know what I read? Check that out. Cool. And you know, one day uh, my channel will be up because it's happening. I was just going to ask you what it's the status happening. of that was. I, I, my, the status is I need to make a video. So <laughs> once that happens, I'll let y'all know. <laughs> okay. Uh, and you can find me, Omnidog, at Omnidog's Vault on YouTube. And... Uh, Omni Dogs underscore Vault on Instagram. Good oh, you can also find me at the Comic Slayer on Instagram where Jess doesn't follow me back. It's fine. I'll be okay. <laughs> but one day I'm hoping he follows me because he keeps not. <laughs> oh, I'm guilty of a lot of things today. <laughs> Holy smoke. One uh, day. I, uh, I just now picked up on the fact that I forgot you were the Comic Slayer. Yeah, that's me. <laughs> yeah, okay. Yeah. I will definitely follow you back. Oh, thank you. I only follow like about four people. Yeah, I want to be the fifth. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. I'll go on right now. Great. Uh, so uh, please hit the like button. Please subscribe. Feel free to leave a comment. We always uh, respond to comments. And uh, peace and love. Peace and love. Thanks, Thanks, everyone. We're watching. We appreciate it.